Hello children, today's topic is ARTS Arts Assisted Reproductive Techniques under the chapter Reproductive Health in video number 5. So let's define infertility. What is infertility? Infertility is the inability to conceive in spite of unprotected sexual cohabitation. And the causes of infertility may be psychological cause, physical, drugs, disease, immunological or congenital. And the remedy to infertility is arts. What is arts? Assisted, assisted reproductive technologies. Now, we can deal with the different types of arts. There are a number of arts, but the arts which are included in your text are IVF, GIFT, AI and ICSI. Now before going into the abbreviations of these arts, let me tell you the two terms you all are familiar with, in vitro and in vivo. What is in vitro? In vitro means outside the body, in vivo means inside the body. So, the two terms you have to be familiar with is in vivo and in vitro. Now, the first two arts is applicable for defective females. This IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. It is also called test tube babies. The second one is also applicable to females. It is GIFT, gamete intra fallopian transfer. Now, the third and fourth art options are applicable to males, defective males. AI stands for artificial insemination. And ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So, the first two arts are applicable or recommended to defective females and the last two AI and ICSI is recommended to defective males. So, now we are going to uh, deal with each and every art in detail, why it is recommended and how it is conducted. Now, we are going to see first in the case of female, but before going into the defect in female, we must see what happens normally. For a normal female to conceive, two conditions are mandatory. Which are the two conditions? Ovulation is a must. Every month, the female partner should ovulate. So, there's chances of fertilization. And second is the environment for fusion of egg and sperm should be conducive. Which is the place where egg and sperm fuses? It is the ampulla. So, these two conditions should be met for fertilization to take place normally. So, I am showing it on this diagram on the uterus. The egg every month, the oocyte should develop into the mature graphene follicle and should be released by the process called ovulation. That is mandatory. Okay, we know the different stages of the oocyte, primary oocyte, secondary oocyte, oocyte tertiary oocyte and graphene uh, uh, follicle. It should finally reach that stage. Okay, so primary ovarian for secondary tertiary and finally the graphene uh, ovarian follicle and it is released by a process called ovulation. And we know when does ovulation occur? It occurs in the middle of the menstrual cycle. This is compulsory and second condition is this place where the ampulla, it should be conducive, suitable for the egg and sperm to fuse. So, these two conditions should be met, then only under normal conditions will fertilization occur. Now, we are going to see the case when we have to recommend an art technique. So, we are going to see the case where the female ovulation occurs. The first condition is met. That is ovulation occurs regularly, normally without any problem. Ovulation is occurring in that female. But the environment for fusion of the egg and sperm is not suitable. In that case, what is recommended? IVF is recommended. Intra, in vitro fertilization is recommended. Now, 
Now look at the steps of in vitro fertilization. The first step is the female, the defective female is administered with some hormones so that she will ovulate and not only ovulate most of the ovarian follicles will mature into the graphene follicles. So, number of her, uh, her ovaries are filled with a number of mature graphene follicles. Second step, the eggs are retrieved from the ovary. See, it is directly retrieved from the ovary. Okay. Third step, the egg and the egg is placed in a petri dish. It is not the petri dish we see in the bio lab, it is called the incubation petri dish. The egg is placed and the semen from the husband is also placed in it. So, that fertilization takes place outside the body. Therefore, it is called in vitro fertilization. So, in vitro egg and sperm fuses here. And we know the different stages of the fusion of the egg and sperm we have first is the zygote. Then what happens to the zygote? It becomes the two cell stage, four cell stage, eight cell stage, 16 cell stage, 32, 64, etc. So that happens here. The zygote is allowed to grow with the nutrients. It is allowed to grow in a simulated environment similar to the uh, fallopian tube. Now what happens if the egg, if this embryo is taken? at the 8th cell stage, then it is transferred into the fallopian tube. See where I transfer this? It is transferred into the fallopian tube. But if it, uh, the, the embryo is allowed to grow further and it is made to reach 32 or 64 cell stage, then it is transferred into the uterus. So depending on which stage the embryo is transferred, it is uh, the embryo is ready to be transferred, it is transferred to the respective place. If it is in the 8th, till the 8th cell stage, it is transferred to the fallopian tube. But if it goes beyond the 8th cell stage, it cannot be transferred into the fallopian tube, it is transferred to the uterus. So, once again, the different steps of IVF. First, the female, defective female is administered with hormones, so that the oocytes or the primary ovarian follicles uh, matures and develops into the graphene follicle. It, we know the different stages, primary ovarian follicle, secondary ovarian follicle, tertiary ovarian follicle and finally the graphene follicles. Ovarian follicles are ready in the ovaries. So, we have the ovaries and num with a number of eggs or with a number of follicles, ovarian follicles. The second stage is we are retrieving these eggs or these ovarian follicles from the ovaries. The third stage is this egg is placed in a petri dish incubation petri dish and the semen from her husband is also placed in this and simulated environment is provided and therefore fusion of the egg and sperm takes place. Now this is the embryos allowed to grow and we have learned by cleavage the different stages of embryogenesis 2 cell stage, 4 cell stage, 8, 16, 32 and 64. If they find the doctor find that the 8 celled blastomeres are suitable for transfer it is transferred but it is transferred to the fallopian tube or it is allowed to grow till 32 or 64 cell stage then the embryo is transferred into the uterus. Accordingly we have according to the way it is transferred we have the abbreviation intra fallopian transfer or in this case it will be called intra uterine transfer. So in in vitro fertilization IVF is followed by embryo transfer. The embryo transfer can be either intra fallopian or intra uterine depending upon which stage. If it is 8th cell stage, up to the 8th cell stage it is transferred to the fallopian tube. Beyond the 8th cell stage it is transferred to the uterus. Now what happens? The lady is pregnant and the development con continues in vivo till 9 months. So she completes her 9 months of gestation and like any other normal cases she might either go undergo caesarean or normal delivery to give birth to a healthy child. The next case, ovulation of the female does not occur. So here is the defect. Every month, monthly ovulation or every menstrual cycle, there is no ovulation. But she provides a very suitable environment for the fusion of the egg and sperm. So this condition is not met. Whereas 
the environment the ampulla is suitable for this fusion of the egg and sperm in this case the option is gift g i f t what is gift gamete intra fallopian transfer what is done is the gamete from a donor is taken so the female gamete is the egg the egg from a donor is taken and it is directly injected into the fallopian tube so which part of the fallopian tube into the ampulla and to assure fertilization even the semen of the uh, husband is taken and uh, placed in the fallopian tube so you can see in this picture both the gametes are transferred into the fallopian tube though the female is having the drawback that she cannot ovulate but to assure uh, uh, fertilization the gamete of both husband and wife is directly injected or transferred into the fallopian tube so this is a case of gift so gift is under recommended when when the person ovulates the female ovulates ovulation is normal sorry when ovulation is not normal but the, she provides an environment for fusion of gametes in that case the gamete is taken from a donor and the gamete from the donor along with the husband's semen is injected directly or transferred directly into the fallopian tube and we know this lady has the environment for fusion of the egg and sperm egg and sperm fuses so these are the two cases applicable in females now let's go into the cases of males in males there are two techniques recommended one is artificial insemination and the other one is i c s i now when is artificial insemination recommended in this person this person has the inability to inseminate what is inseminate to ejaculate or when the sperm count is low so under such circumstances what is recommended artificial insemination so once again why is artificial insemination recommended it is recommended in when the male has a drawback here the drawback may be either is unable to ejaculate or inseminate or if at all he has inseminated the sperms number of sperms in the semen is very low so sperm count is low in that case the option is artificial insemination now look at this it's simple as that the semen is taken from the husband and it is directly injected into the vagina if it's in if it is injected to the vagina it is known as intra vaginal insemination or if it is injected into the uterus it is called intra uterine insemination so depending on which place it is injected or inseminated it is called accordingly so if it is uh, if it's injected into the vagina it's called intra vaginal insemination or deep into the uterus it's called intra uterine insemination usually it is intra uterine so this sure sh sh for fusion and here we have the female here the female is not defective here the female the egg is released by ovulation it is in the ampulla so around that period fertile period i have already mentioned the fertile period 10 to 17 days of the menstrual cycle this artificial insemination is conducted so the procedure is very simple the semen of the male is taken and it's injected through the female's vagina either into the vagina or into the uterus and it's done around the time when the female is ovulating so there's an egg also ready so this will lead to the chances of fusion of the egg and sperm to take place so this is one case where it is applicable to or it's recommended to males defective males now second case is icsi it is done when the male inseminates there's no problem in inseminating he inseminates or ejaculates that is happening but there's inability of the sperm to penetrate the egg in normal cases i have put a cartoon of it there are millions of sperms that comes in the vicinity of the egg and only one sperm all the sperms are trying to penetrate the different layers surrounding the egg like zona pellucida corona radiata plasma membrane and only one sperm will successfully enter the egg but in the case of this condition he inseminates there are lots of sperms but the sperms are unable to make its way through the different layers surrounding the egg 
in that case the option is this intra cytoplasmic sperm injection in this technique what is done this is the injection see the extension of that injection needle see the sperm is taken and it is transferred directly into the cytoplasm of the egg I will make it large see one sperm of the husband is taken and it is directly with the help of an injection it is made to pierce into the cytoplasm of the egg now the sperm has definitely got into the egg this is called intra cytoplasmic sperm injection so the two techniques or technologies applicable in males or recommended for males one is artificial insemination the other one is icsi under what conditions artificial insemination is done when the male uh, does not is enable is unable to inseminate in that condition what is done the semen of the husband is taken collected and it is injected into the vagina or into the uterus usually it is done into the uterus and it is done when it is done during the 10th to 17th day with the help of ultrasound scan the doctor will know when the tentative day the uh, probable date of ovulation so we see the egg is already released in the fallopian tube and at that particular time this is injected so thus this uh, fertilization of the egg and sperm takes place now when is icsi done here the the husband is able to inseminate or ejaculate but the sperms that are produced are unable to penetrate the different layers of the egg normal conditions the sperms are, have the sperm lysin which is secreted by the acrosome i taught you earlier which penetrates the different layers surrounding the egg but here it is unable so what is done with the help of an injection one sperm is taken and injected deep into the cytoplasm of the egg and this is also in vitro this is done in vitro and just it continues like our IVF it continues this is allowed to grow it is allowed to undergo cleavage to 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 cell stage whichever cell stage if it is 8 cell stage it is transferred into the fallopian tube or if it is beyond the 8 cell stage it is transferred into the uterus so the continuation of this ICSI the remaining continuation is like our IVF okay I hope you have understood the different techniques in arts now let us look into the complications of assisted reproductive techniques the first and first, uh, foremost complication is the instruments used in arts is very expensive second second it requires precise handling by specialized professionals so it requires the expertise of specialized professionals to handle this third there are only few centers offering uh, such services fourth it is affordable to a very few people because it's very expensive only the rich people can afford it and lastly religious social and emotional factors deter the people from going to these pro procedures we know that can you recollect that IVF the number of um, eggs are placed in the petri dish and the semen is put into it it is allowed to fuse and many of the eggs gets fertilized and only the healthy embryos are transferred the remaining embryos are destroyed so it is just like murdering so this is against the our religious and emotional and social uh, feelings so once again complication of arts first and foremost complication it is very expensive the instruments used are very expensive third it requires uh, the professional expertise that is precise handling by specialized professionals third there are only few centers in our country that are giving this option of infertility to clarify with arts fourth it is only affordable to a very few people the people who are very rich can afford and dish out a lot of money to go for an arts nearly lakhs and lakhs of money is required to for this procedure and lastly religious and social emotional factors deter the people from going i told you the reason why now so then what will be the better option we saw the complication of arts so what should be the best option instead of going for assisted reproductive technique we are living in india we could have opted for something else the best option is adoption we 
you know our country there are a number of orphaned and destitute children who turn out to be criminals rowdies etc anti social elements of the society in sometimes they may not survive uh, to adulthood they may die there are lots of these dis, uh, destitute or orphan children so why can't we adopt these bring them up and also moreover our legal laws are very flexible there is this legal adoption laws so why can't we adopt a child so better option for arts because we saw the lots of complications connected with arts the better option is to go for an adoption thank you i hope you understood today's topic arts